What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. I'm Jeff, this is Paul, and we're here with Burley Fishing to talk to you about how to rig and fish everything in this month's box. So we're gonna go bait by bait and talk to you about the setup we're gonna use it in and then where we're gonna fish it. Should be a blast. If you guys like the content, be sure to subscribe to Monster Bass. And if you have an extra 1.7 seconds, hop on over to Burley Fishing's channel as well and throw us a subscribe. Plus, we go live right after Monster Bass mm -hmm. does, right here on YouTube. So check us both out. Go on the MB Live, hop over with us, and just make it an amazing Thursday night. All right, let's get into these baits, shall we? All right, so we're gonna start with the top of the water column with the old prop turtle. So there's a whole series of prop uh, baits from Lunker Hunt, the mm -hmm. prop series, if you will. There's all different kinds of creatures. They all like to go on top of the water. Now, if you know bass, and even if you don't know bass, one thing you may know about them is they will pretty much eat anything. Everything. Now, does that mean they'll Birds, eat every single ducks, bait every single time? Turtles. No, but they have been known to eat every single thing mm -hmm. that comes within uh, bass lip reach of the water. That would include turtles. So in this case, especially Especially I would say like further down south, out west, out here in Michigan, I haven't had an insane amount of luck on turtles, but I've posted about turtles on our page before and some of you guys say they kill it. Everybody says like they absolutely smash or can. So stinger this hook. is gonna be an impossible, holy stinger hook. Uh, so you've got a big old soft body turtle here. Think frog, right? Just think top water frog. Mm -hmm. Now the difference is, is this thing is a little bit on the larger side. So. And it's, and it's also got duck feet and it's got duck feet that so as you can see each one of these act as scoops and they kick up the water so what i will say is this is this meant for heavy cover with this stinger hook heckin no it is not you get hung up a lot so what i'm gonna try and do is think about maybe i'm gonna try and find a backwater pocket that's got some still water maybe a lily pad line or a grass line i'm gonna run this along that grass line what i'm trying to do is create a whole bunch of commotion that a bass just cannot ignore so that's gonna be my first number one my number two mm -hmm. might actually be like right at dusk, right before or Ooh, at nightfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what this is gonna do, it doesn't matter that this is a turtle. That's not important. The bass is not like, oh, look, a turtle. They're like, oh, look, insane commotion. Something trying to get away from something else. That is gonna get ignite it. that like, I'm hungry sensation and that fish yeah. is gonna go chase whatever it is. That's when that stinger hook comes into play. So they don't even have to actually eat the whole bait. They might just be ticked off at whatever it is that's causing a disturbance, but they might, when they take a slap at it or a swipe at it, make it caught by that stinger hook. So, uh, and then you got obviously two of your more traditional hooks like you would see in a soft body frog mm -hmm. as well so no matter what happens you have a good chance of catching a fish if you can entice a strike so my recommendation heavy braid uh heavy rod because you're gonna want to you got to jam those hooks through that fish's mouth when you They're set the hook stout. you're gonna have to get after it uh and then think about places where you can either incite a little bit of a riot and get a fish to come in and be the bouncer and at least swipe <laughs> at it uh so, bass. yeah so weed edges uh trim still water and then uh potentially um you know again anywhere a fish is just hanging out but definitely not heavy cover all right so next up we have the bully blade now this is an interesting shutter bait essentially it's, uh, like a, it's like a take on a chatterbait in this case though we have a fixed blade so rather than this blade being able to move like you would see on a chatterbait this one stays in place now when i say shutter bait what i mean is that this head is kind of doing this thing Right, so rather than the blade doing that movement, this entire jig head is actually moving to give you that action. And with this free swing and hook off the back, that's gonna give this like natural fish swimming action to it. You've also got like this sexy shad looking color, so it's gonna be bright popping colors here and a four-aught hook with uh, molded in bait keepers right back there. All right, so with something like this, with a shutter bait, like I want it to look more natural, so I'm gonna throw generally like a smaller paddle tail on here or a fluke, and that's gonna give it a really nice, natural moving action. Now, depending on what kind of water you're fishing, if you're up north or down south, you can go with a shorter versus a longer uh, paddle tail or fluke with that, just to incite the fish and maybe get bigger fish. I like bigger fish. I like big <laughs> fish. All right, so something like this, I'm gonna be fishing anywhere I'm fishing really chatterbaits. I'm just going to fish it a little bit differently and maybe they're looking for a different kind of action, different kind 
kind of bait. And with that, I'm running along like weed lines. I'm doing like drop offs, ledges, any sort of depth changes in your water, in the structure there. Uh, I'm gonna run this across that. If I can find structure like wood and rock, I'm gonna throw it around there too. I throw chatterbaits pretty much everywhere, but my favorite would be like just like taller weed lines. And generally I'm getting some nice pike and some nice bass off of that. By the way, with something like this and my chatterbaits, I throw them all on the same setup and spinnerbaits too. And that is uh, generally like a, a 611 to a 73 medium heavy rod, which is fast action. And then I'll throw it on like a faster gear ratio reel. Right now I have mine on my lose tournament MP. So that's like an eight, three to one. It's just a higher gear ratio. So pick like, I, I generally pick the fastest I can, and then I can always slow down if I need to. But if you want to get that blade moving or give some added action to it, the speed helps. Cool bait, give it a shot. If you haven't noticed, these are all Lunker Hunt baits because this is the takeover month and the January 2022 box. Now, what do, we love about, what do we love about takeover boxes, right? You're getting awesome brand, but you're usually getting like a little bit extra. So you, yes, everything in the box is going to be Lunker Hunt, but they're giving you that little bit of yeah. extra. So you're gonna get a little more value in each one of these boxes. If you remember some of the boxes we've seen in the past, the last Lunker Hunt box. The last Lunker Hunt was amazing. Banger. And then like the Strike King box that we've seen in the past, like you just get like a, a little bit more bang for your buck when you get these takeover boxes. So do it up, man. It's heckin' awesome. It's so, kind of like running over to like your local sporting goods store to the Lunker Hunt section and just doing this. <laughs> Clear the wall into your shopping cart. Which we love to see. So up next, we've got the Lunker Hunt. This is the Impact Series. This is mm -hmm. like a very aggressive series of baits. Very loud. So this is their- Impactful. Is the most aggressive jerk bait that you're probably gonna find. This is the, oh, come on, get over here. So this is the <laughs> Distress. It's called the 6F. Now, if you can't figure out what that means, or if you haven't understood what six that feet. means- Six feet. It's a six foot diving jerk bait. Uh, but it is aggressive. So check out the paint scheme. Like that is, that's a lot for a fish to take in. Um, it's also very, it's also very, very loud. So very there's at loud. least one ball bearing. I haven't actually figured out how many are in there. 75 probably. So everything about this bait is aggressive. The black and green with the red paint on the throat. Um, what I do like on here is they did paint right here. Um, what kind of depth you can expect. It's a zero to six foot. So this is a floating jerk bait, which means it's actually gonna either suspend at a minimum or rise a little bit as you fish it. Um, if you've never fished a jerk bait before, uh, there's some really, there's some things that you really should need to know as far as gear goes. I'm gonna wanna use a, at least minimum six and a half, preferably seven to seven and a half foot uh, medium action rod. One with that, that that is a little bit on the stiff side, but a medium action rod. The reason being is, as you can see, there are two treble hooks on this bait. With treble hook baits, you want a, a softer rod tip so that you can let the treble hooks uh, fight all the fish and do all of the work for you. If you, uh, if you have too stiff of a rod, they're actually gonna be able to shake those hooks quite a bit easier. Um, the other thing too here is you're gonna wanna run a spinning setup. Now you can run these on bait casters. I prefer a spinning setup though. Um, it gives you the most amount of sensitivity and really good control of the bait. So you're gonna be doing this like um, quick jerking uh, of the rod tip in order to give like this really erratic uh, motion to the bait. And the most important thing with the jerk bait is make sure that you include a lot of pauses. So twitch, twitch, and then Money a move. long pause. These are best uh, fish to me in cold water situations. Uh, so you're gonna see these fish be a little bit more lethargic in that cold water. And the pause is when you're, that fish is gonna come in, check it out, and then you just have to wait a little bit longer than you normally would, and that's when you're gonna get a fish to strike. And it's a blast to fish. Heckin' fun. So that is your Distress 6F. Lots of distress. Next up, we got the bait shifter. Very interesting paddle tail bait that comes with a jig to help you rig it. Now I'm gonna show you this thing real quick. We did this over on our channel and uh, learned some stuff. So you basically take the jig that it comes with. That's that right there. Very Salt water jig. Interesting. Or hot. Yeah, it's super heavy duty. You take your bait. There's actually like this little hole back here, right behind the fin. And you take the line tie section, poke it in there and you just work her on in, just don't get stabbed. Okay, so you just basically work her on up there and then you'll see there's actually a hole right between the eyes above the head there as well. And that's where your line tie pops out. So this is what you end up with. It's also got this interesting connected paddle tail section, which could give it an added action, could add more durability, because as you can see right behind that tail there, 
that's a super skinny tail section. So I have a feeling this is gonna help this bait hold up a bit more. Paddle tail baits, I mean, you can't really go wrong. Like we can throw this around bait schools, we can throw it around structure, we can throw it around grass lines. And I'm generally throwing it, um, this is a bit heavier, so I probably go to like my medium heavy spinning setup, or I'm gonna go to like a medium, medium heavy bait caster. And you, you can't go wrong with like a seven, three to one gear ratio on that either. So just uh, a pretty much a do all rig is what I'd be throwing this on. And and everywhere. It's hard to really pinpoint a, a section for this, but this is a phenomenal looking bait. Loving the uh, glitter all over this thing. Look at that it's flash. Def it's definitely a clear water it's bait, insane. right? It's a light water bait. Yeah, bait. this like, it's, it's a clear body, silver uh, flake in it. So yeah, if you got clearer water, I'm not throwing this in muddy water per se, but yeah, I think you do really well. So this is probably the most creative name I've ever seen for a bait. It's called the Big Eye Tailspin. I'm just joshing, <laughs> but it's very obvious. It's got a big eye and it's got a spinny tail. So there you go. I don't get it. This one comes in half ounce. I actually, Jeff and I were talking about this earlier. I've seen this one before and wanted to fish, but haven't had a chance to. Now, this is like a new and improved version of some older versions of this bait that I have seen from Lunker Hunt in the past. I love this bait. Funny thing is before we got this box, um, I had this in a shopping cart. I was ready to buy it. And then I saw that it was coming in the box. Now, what, what am I like? What I love about this bait is just it's got like everything about it's pretty unique. Like it, this is like an underspin meets like a body bait meets like a almost like a, a very long casting, uh, deep like dredge the bottom type of bait. Um, but it's got a single treble hook uh, with this Colorado blade attached to the back. Th there's huge blade. There's not a bad time to run this bait. There just no. is not. At a half ounce, you can run very deep water, and by very deep, I mean as deep as. 10, 15 feet if you just give it time. But at a half ounce, I'm probably targeting anywhere from like six to 10 feet of water um, if I'm trying to get somewhere just off the bottom. But you can, with that Colorado blade, it's actually gonna, it's actually gonna like slow down your retrieve and provide a lot of tension for you to hit some of that shallow anywhere maybe between like four and six feet of water pretty easily. The nice thing about half ounce as well, you can cast it a country mile. This thing is going to sail full send Up every them, their time. Mountains. And I love the paint job. Uh, with that reflective eye, quality paint job, uh, and then the silver blade, I think this is gonna do its best work in clear er water. So not murky, but clear er water, and really anything anything other than really dark stained or murky water is gonna do very, very well. The reason I say this, you wanna take advantage of all the light you can with the silver blade. Typically- for the natural me, color. And pattern. the natural color, for sure. You got like basically this like blue gilly, well, perch pattern right here. Um, but when I say, when I see a silver blade, I mostly think clear or water because there's more light in the water to reflect off of that blade. Uh, but really, any situation is gonna be a solid situation. I would recommend not going straight braid though. You are dealing with a treble hook, so I would put some sort of leader on there. I think fluoro is okay, but you'd be okay with mono too. Um, especially with some of those long casts though, I wouldn't go for a very long leader. I'd say two feet, probably two foot leader would be yeah. what I would choose. Hecking cool bait. I have not fished it. I'm really excited to try though. I've fished baits like that before. Definitely a big fan. I think they're super fun to fish with. You know what else is fun to fish with? Can you stop breaking my stuff? No. This guy's worse. Another thing that's super fun to fish with, uh, do you, you have the shirt? You want to show him a shirt? Do what like, shirt are you talking about? Like, this one? Head rigs. They're for nerds like us. All right. Another fun bait for us to fish with would be the Ned Rig. And I love the Lunker Hunt Finesse series. They have like little paddle tails, they have craws, and then they have this little worm, which is kind of like a cut down Lunker stick, which we'll show you in a second. But it's unique because it has this flat side to it. Check this out. So one side is flat with those ridges on it, giving it a ton of added action, and one of them comes pre-rigged. So you get three in a pack, you get this wire weed guard with it, which is nice. You get a unique shape to the head of the jig for this Ned Rig and a unique line tie section as well. So it gives it uh, an interesting, uh, different way to throw this thing. It's a green pumpkin head with a green pumpkin worm, which you cannot go wrong with in just about any water. Um, these are money, love throwing them. We love the Ned Rig here. I'm burly fishing, uh, you guys know that. Rigging wise for this thing, it's a quarter ounce. We're gonna throw this on a medium light. So I've got a Kuma Seros medium light that I love throwing this on at seven foot. And then I'm gonna rig it up with whatever spinning reel I got. It doesn't matter too much. Generally, I'm going with a smaller size reel on my lighter setups though. So it could be like a 1, thousand, 1500 size. Where I'm gonna fish this thing though, we're looking for like lightly stained water uh, to clear water. This is not an amazing technique when you have super dirty water. I never really do produce much when 
and I'm fishing dirty water with a Ned Rig, so I don't do it. Unless you throw like a big Ned Rig, then you might have some luck. But in general, something like this size, I'm throwing it in stained clear water, and I'm gonna be fishing this around any sort of cover I can find. I'm talking laydowns, rocks, riprap, uh, I've got you know trees in the water, sticks, branches, whatever, up against the bank is always great. And then if you can find changes in the water depth or structure around your local water holes, then you're gonna have some luck. They generally work everywhere. You got docks, you got pontoons, you got boats. I mean, you can fish everywhere, whatever. Last thing. Last in the box, you're gonna see the Lunker Stick. Now you'll notice right off the bat, this is a five inch Senko style stick bait. And you're like, well, I've seen one of those before. Have you seen one in Sherbert? I have not. I didn't know this was a color that existed <laughs> on the planet Earth. When people say like, I like this colorway, I'm like, I didn't know that that was a thing. Uh, I just took my family to Frankenmuth, Michigan, and uh, we went to do like the Zenders world famous chicken dinner and my daughter had sherbet, and guess what? It was this color. It literally looks like what's coming yeah. out of the uh, the ice cream machine. Yep. So classic stick bait. Now I will say this one's a little bit on the softer side, but it's definitely- I do like that, it's good action. Yeah, so on a wacky rig, I know this is, I, there's no bad way to fish a stick bait. I nope. mean, there, there really isn't. There, you can't mess it up. As long as it's in the water. Exactly, you gotta get it wet. But one of the things I will say with a softer bait like this one that's got a little more action to it, I actually automatically think wacky rig. Uh, it's just that, so that's my gonna be my recommendation, the number one way to fish. I think you can fish this uh, with a little bit of weight, maybe even weightless, uh, but with all with that like more supple plastic, you're just gonna get a heck ton of action, which is where the wacky rig really stands out. Now the wacky rig is basically just a hook right through the middle, tied directly to your leader line, which is gonna be a fluoro. Uh, what are you gonna say? Like uh, anywhere between I'll say eight and ten pound, eight and twelve pound oh, yeah. leader typically uh, for something like this. Kind of depends on your hook size, but that's what I'm gonna say. When you talk about like what 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 is a standard stick bait? Like this meets all of the criteria yep. it's a little bit it's durable but it's also a little bit stretchy it's nice and soft but it's not so soft that you can't rig it as like a texas rig yeah. so this will fish however you need it to fish a stick bait and it's five inch which i think is that perfect like it's going to work for any body of water that you throw it in uh, the last thing i'll say is about color um, this seems pretty extreme but the nice thing about this color is that there's it's not clear Right, you yeah. can't see through that. Why does that matter? That means this is actually gonna work pretty well in dark, dirty water. It's actually a really good option for dark, dirty water, but because it's such a bright color, and very loud, it's also gonna work really well and stand out really well in yeah. clear water. There is no bad place uh, to fish this. So, my recommendation is fish it wherever you see water. And go eat some sherbet. All right, so that is all we got for you guys today. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully when you get your Lunker Hunt box, you can pick out all these baits and go fish with them mm -hmm. if you have open water. And if you don't, guess what? That's fine. I mean, that's why generally Monster Bass is doing like this Christmassy takeover style boxes around Christmas time because most of us can't fish. So we get to load up on cool baits and go try them out once the ice goes away. And you got a lot of great like spring baits. Like there's a heck ton yeah. of good spring baits in there. The jerk so bait, ready to go. Still, dude, you can't miss. Yeah, 100%. So get out on the water when you can and test these things out. Hopefully some of the techniques and rigging options we talked about today are helpful for you. And if they are, of course, subscribe to Monster Bass and subscribe to Burly Fishing. And by the way, be sure to smash like on this video and ring that notification bell and then come back for our lives. We co-live it, right? <laughs> Monster Bass, Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern. Burly Fishing, 8 p.m. Eastern. Stay on your computer, kids. Back to back. All right, love you. See you next video, bye.